we had two fantastic days in, uh, uh, in New Zealand. And they do have a little head start on you guys. We actually gave away some Nutriveris there. And, 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 and then we sent it to Sydney and we didn't have some here. So I apologize in case you hear about it. But uh, I'm just kind of building a little anticipation for it, right? How's that feel? You ready to get some? May 1st, we launched it in, in the US. My goodness, we had every station in customer service filled. I mean, every single seat was taken and we still had people on hold. That hasn't happened in a long time. So it's exciting. There is a lot of good things going on. And, um, and I'm gonna kind of try to share that with you today and, and kind of give you a vision for where things are going. And that vision is not gonna be just, see for me, I don't look at it just from a, a Manatech point of view. I look at it in terms of where is humanity going? And are we gonna be at the intersection of where humanity is going. Folks, uh, if you, if you you know, I know hockey is not a big deal here as much as it is for our Canadian friends, uh, but uh, Wayne Gretzky, who was a great, one of the greatest hockey players of all times, he was renowned for not playing the puck where it was, but to play it where it was going to be. Right, does that make sense? When you look at great players, I mean, I, I relate to soccer, so like somebody like Ronaldo, plus he's Portuguese, so that, you know, I'm a little biased. But those guys know how to be where the ball is going, know where the ball is. I want you guys to understand that what I'm going to be sharing with you today is really like a leapfrog that we as Manatech have taken. Okay, sometimes when you're, when you're slightly behind, the way to, to, to make it up is to leapfrog. You got to get beyond where everybody else is. And what we've done the last two and a half years, I call that my, our, you know, we were going through a desert, you know, um, experience, right? 40 years in the desert. We went through our four years in the desert. But during that time, I think we figured out some things that today was going to seem pretty brilliant because it is where humanity is going. See, I'm gonna ask you to put your Manatech associate hat on once in a while, and then I'm gonna ask you to put a, a businessman's hat on for a second sometimes. Is that, is that okay? Because as, a, as, a, as I look at it as a business, I want you to understand business is about filling a need, solving a problem, filling a need, right? That's why we exist. And the tip we get for solving problems and filling needs is called income. Now, I, I got to check because usually I, I want to make sure there's nobody in this room that is allergic to money or anything like that. No allergies to money here. Good. Okay. No? Like, oh, okay. Yeah. Brokitis is called. That's a disease, brokitis. But uh, it's also, for me, pretty amazing to be in this, in this room. Uh, and uh, we're missing my, my buddy Rod, but he's out there in South Africa really bringing that same message out there. I think he was invited to come so he could really work with them on Navigate. And that's because people are really excited about what that does. And Cheryl, I want to say thank you for what you and your whole family, the sacrifices you made the last, I don't know how many, but probably a couple of years, but what you guys done have really spawned something that's gonna be a game changer for Manatech. And in behalf of all Manatech associates from around the world, I wanna say thank you. So let's give them a hand. I know that it's, Rod is the face, but I know behind that there's a family that really supports him for him to be able to do the things that he does. Same thing with Darren, same thing with Tracy and their families. Give him a big hand as well, Mike, right? Um, because it's been amazing what this thing has done. One of my goals for tonight is that by the time you leave here, that you have decided, if you're not yet 
if you haven't subscribed yet to, to navigate, I want to tell you, I'm going to start with the end in mind. My end is simple. Get registered. This is a game changer. And as I go through the whole program, I'm going to tell you why. I'm going to show you how. Now, before I go into what I want to do tonight, it might be good for me to understand why you're here. Because I'm sure as you were traveling here. Now, by the way, do we have any new people here for the first time? Oh, okay. What's your name, sir? Sean. Who else? Who else was it? What's your name? Ben. He wasn't sure if he should put his hand up. You're right, because I pick on new people. That's what I do. So Ben and Sean. Who else? Yes, Kyle, right? <laughs> I know you're, you're kind of coming back. So what's your name? Alex. Alex, Alex Ben, and Sean. I'm going to have to remember that. It's, it's tough with jet lag, I have to tell you. It's 4 o'clock in the morning where I come from. So Sean... As you were traveling here this, you know, this evening, you go, okay, um, Friday night, what's good on television on Friday nights? <laughs> Scott, I was asking Sean. Okay. What, what is it? Foodie? Is that what you said? So anyways, you had to miss television today and other things to be here. As you were driving here, what was your expectation? Of tonight. If tonight filled all your expectations, what would it look like? What, 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 what would you like to see happen tonight? Opportunity? Is that why, you know, is that, was that what made you come? Okay. Great. All right. Thank you. Ben, what were you thinking about? Go, oh my God, I'm not sure what I'm doing. <laughs> why am I going there? But what, what was it going through your mind? You wanted to learn more about what? About the business? And how to do it? Oh, good. All right. How about yourself, Alex? Same. same? I mean, you've kind of seen what's going on. You kind of, it's like, it's the same restaurant, but we've changed the cook, the, we've changed the menu, we've changed the decor, you know, <laughs> right? It's, uh, it's different. How about for those of you who, I mean, you, you've been around, I mean, what were you hoping tonight would do for you? Where we're going? What's the vision for where we're going? Okay. How about you, sweetie? Well, I had to pick on you, of course. Look at that smiling face. It was like a magnet. I had to come. What were you hoping tonight could be for you? How to make it work and what's the vision for where we're going? Okay, super. All right, thank you, guys. Thank you for helping me. How many of you, I mean, when you think of Manatech, you think about, well, enjoying a healthy lifestyle, right? I mean, that's, that's what we're all about. That's why we're here. And usually when I talk to new people, a lot of times I get, well, I wanted to know more about the product. How many of you get that? You know, I want to know more about the product. Is that important? Absolutely. Health is your first wealth, right? I mean, that's, and, and, and I've been in this industry for 32 years. You know, Sean... 32 years ago, on a Monday night, I got a phone call from a good friend of mine who said, what are you doing Tuesday night? It was Monday night. What are you doing Tuesday night? What do you think I was doing Monday night? Watching TV. What do you think I was going to do Tuesday night? Watching TV. How about Wednesday night? <laughs> Watching TV. And I don't know why, but I said, you know, I, I know why. I, he said, you know, I want you to come so, because I need your expert opinion on something. That was the key word, expert opinion. Yeah, of course. I'll come. I'll give you my expert opinion, right? <laughs> and Sean, I came, and I sat in the back of the room, and I uh, had my engineering position, kind of like what you have right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm going uh, to analyze this thing. I got to give him a, a good opinion about this thing. That night changed my life. My life was never the same again. That night I realized there was more to life than what I had been told my whole life. I was 20 years old, but by the age of 20, I was already all set. Get a good education, get a good job, work 40 to 45 years so I can retire 
on half, in, uh, uh, on half the income that I couldn't live on in the first place. It's called the 40-year plan. I was completely convinced that's what I needed to do. I was going to be an engineer. Uh, my life was mapped out. I mean, I just had it all mapped out. That night changed everything for me. So, Ben, this is my goal for tonight. For those of you who are here for the first time, I want to do for you what somebody did for me 32 years ago. Because by the age of 31, I had retired from engineering and never went back to engineering. I spent 22 years traveling 107 countries. That phone call changed my life, my finances. It changed, the, you know, it, it helped me put two, two brothers through school. One is a doctor, one is a minister. It, it, it helped me buy my mom her, her home and take care of her. I still take care of her today. And you know what? It, it helped me raise children who think totally different than other people. So that phone call not only affected me, it affected my next generation and probably the next generation. Because we broke, I broke the curse of poverty in my family because I was there that Tuesday night. Now, do you think the person who called me, do you think that he did me a favor? The biggest favor you can ever make, you can ever do for somebody else. I mean, let me tell you, the, the, this, this story had a sad ending. And the sad ending is this. The gentleman, John Silver, who invited me that Monday night, is retiring next year from the post office where he worked at 32 years ago. Does that make sense? He opened the door for me, let me in, and he never went through the door himself. Was it better for me than it was for him? Absolutely. Please remember that next time you pick up the phone and you're nervous and shaking because you think you're going to do yourself a favor or you're going to ask them to do something for you. Remember that it's not about you, it's about them. Does that make sense? And for whom much is given, much is required. Now I'm going to look, I'm going to sound like I'm excited. <laughs> Even with a jet lag. But I, I want you to know something. I'm not doing it to impress you, Ben. I'm not. I get passionate about this stuff. Absolutely. This gives, has given me a platform to touch hundreds of thousands of lives all over the world. There's literally no place in the world that I cannot go and there is a friend there. Was, isn't that right? In New Zealand, my best friend from China, when we opened China together, it was so nice to, to see him again. And it was nice for him to see me as well. Would you like to land in 90 different countries and there's somebody there waiting for you who's your friend? Would that make your life different? Would that make your life richer? Do those relationships make you a better person? Does that have anything to do with money? So for those of you who think, well, this is all about the money, it's not. The money is a tip for how many lives you've changed. So that's why when we talk about increasing your income, what we're always saying is giving you an opportunity to solve more problems for more people. Does that make sense? Now, answer this question for me. If you pick a person who makes a lot of money, now, again, why do you make money? Because you're solving problems for people, right? Every one of you, if you're getting paid, it's because you're solving some kind of a problem for somebody. People don't pay you for just sticking around and showing up. you got to be doing something, right? All right, so let's think about that for a second. So if you, make, if you have a person who makes a lot of money and a person who makes a little bit of money, who's more selfish? A little bit of money. He's solving small problems for few people. He makes little money. And the person who makes big money solves big problems for lots of people. Are we getting it? That's why I don't have analogy about money. Because money is just a scorekeeper of how many people are better off because I'm here. And that's a good attitude to have, what do you think? 
And that leads me to the number three thing, why we might be here. How many of you think that people are looking for purpose in their lives? You know, I heard the statistics today that 72% of Australians don't like their jobs, which is better than the 85% in America who don't like their jobs. Now, let me ask you this. Why do you think people don't like their jobs? Huh? It's meaningless. Can you imagine spending 50 years of your life doing something and nobody even noticed? Really? You know, you know the, 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 the wealthiest place in the world is a cemetery. Because all the big dreams are laying there in a coffin, never got a chance to be manifested. I couldn't think of living that way. I want my life to mean something. There's a marketplace out there. I want you to understand this is where humanity is going. Humanity needs three things. Health, finance, and purpose. And if we have those three things to offer, and if we can offer it to enough people and, and help enough people with these three things, then we never have to worry about ourselves. Because what is ours will come. No problem. Now, would you agree with me that there's a trend in the world today that people want to return to a healthier lifestyle. Are we, uh, am I making it up? Is this like, or is this for real? This is for real. Farmers market are becoming popular. Is that true? People want to get organic. People want to get gluten free. They want to get, you know, uh, no MSG, no trans fat. You guys think that's just a fad we're going through? Or do you think there's a movement that's building up? It's a movement, folks. It's a, move, it's a movement whose time has come. You can't stop it anymore. This train has left the station. Folks, how many of you have seen these, all these movies that have come out in the last five years? Super Size Me, Food Inc., Food Matters, Fat, Sick, and Nearly Dead, Forks over knives. That's just in the last five years, folks. Why do you think people are making these documentaries? Food Inc. Was, a, was the most viewed documentary in the history of documentaries. Why do you think that is? 